Hello, this is Pastor Siegfried Ignatia, and welcome to our Bible study as we continue today in the book of Joshua. Uh, the previous session was Joshua 4. Uh, we did verse uh, 1 uh, through 18, and today we will be doing 18 through 24. So, our title is Memorial of God's um, Powerful Hand. The crossing. We are continuing to talk about the crossing of the people of the Israel of the River Jordan. But before we go dive into it, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this moment that we can come and focus on your word. And we trust, O oh God, that from reading your scriptures and emphasizing on the highlights, we can learn more from you. And we thank you as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are continuing with a memorial of God's powerful hand, uh, the crossing. We talk about the crossing of uh, the Jordan. And we're going to go back just to repeat what happened previously. Previously in verse 1 through uh, 18, um, better say 17, we found it to be very repetition. Is the repetition of the same thing over and over again. And we do see this very often in the Bible, uh, in the written, especially in Hebrew, where things tend to repeat. And the reason of this repetition is to emphasize what's important uh, in a story or in a chapter. And what are the things that are important uh, in this chapter? These were the things that were important. Uh, God brought his people to the banks of the Jordan. And then uh, they received instruction for Joshua, the priests that were carrying the ark, which was symbol of God's presence, would go in front of everyone to cross into the promised land. And the people had to follow the ark and wait until when the priest um, stopped walking into the water. And it says when, they, when their feet touched the water, the miracle would happen. Guess what? The water that was going to come, um, I would say, um, upstream, would stop like a wall. And the rest of the water would run down. And the, the river, uh, um, um, uh, what is it? The bottom of the river will be exposed and the people were able to cross over dry ground. This was a captivating moment. An exciting moment. And God wanted his people to remember this miracle. So he told uh, the people, he told Joshua, that each tribe, a man of each tribe, had to pick up a rock and build a memorial so they can remember this amazing day. And also Joshua put some uh, on the riverbed itself. This was the, the um, reason for this memorial. Um, and this was uh, also the reason for, um, let me say, the repetitiveness, better say, repeating the same thing over and over again. Verse 18. As soon as the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant came up out of the riverbed and their feet were on dry high ground, the water of the Jordan returned and overflow its banks like before. Look at this. When their feet touched the water, the water stopped. When their feet were on high ground, the water returned. The water returned as it was previously. It, over, it overflowed the banks as before. What an amazing miracle. Something that makes you say, what? How is this possible? Because God told them, God was going to go ahead of them. God is the one that was going to stop the water, stop the river, so his people could go through. So much whatsoever season you are in your life, take note of this. God can stop the river. God can stop the situation. God can stop it. So you can cross through 
on dry land uh, in, in safety, no matter the obstacle, no matter how big, no matter impossible. Because I imagine for these people, they must have thought, how are we going to do this? How are we going to cross over? How are we going to make it? And God showed to them that God was with them and it was going to happen. And it did happen on that day. So in verse 19, so the people crossed the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. Then they camped on Gilgal, just east of Jericho. It was there at Gilgal that Joshua piled up the 12 stones taken from the Jordan River. It was at a campsite that Joshua piled up all the rocks and they made uh, the monument. Verse 21 said, says, Then Joshua said to the Israelites, In the future, your children will ask, What do these stones mean? Then you can tell them. This is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the river right before your eyes, and he kept it dry until you were all across, just as he did at the Red Sea when he dried it up until we had all crossed over. This is something we have to visualize. And I always keep repeating, I say, we have a hard time conceiving or perceiving uh, these things as you look at what Joshua is saying right here. In the future, your children will ask, what does this stone mean? Why did you pile up the stone? Why did you put them together? And it says, the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. The Jordan is known for overflowing its banks. The Jordan is known to not to be an easy river. The Jordan is known is known for being a challenge. So when your children ask you, you will say to them, you see that river over there? You see how raging it is? You need to know, we cross over it on dry ground. And most likely the kids will say, what? And keep thinking, yes. The raging river, we cross it on dry ground. And they would say, how was it possible? How can you overcome such a big challenge? How can you overcome such a great obstacle? And here are the words. For the Lord your God tried up the river. For God is the one. So God used the priest, the priests. God used Joshua to give the command. The priest had to stand in the water. But God is the one that dried it up. Not behind their back, right in front of the eye. So they witness the whole manifestation of God's power, of God's glory, right there in plain sight. In plain sight. And it stayed dry until when all came across. Isn't this amazing? Not only did he stop it, but he held it until the thousands of people crossed this river into a new land that he, that he had uh, uh, promised them because it was God. He did this so all the nations of the earth, earth may know that the Lord's hand is powerful and so you might fear the Lord your God forever. So God displays his glory that all of the nations might know that God's hands, God's hands is powerful. At the beginning or in the middle of this, I told you uh, the importance of repetition. Through this ch uh, chapter, we see the same thing being repeated again. Um, God told Joshua, uh, they cross over uh, until their feet get wet. So to emphasize the importance, what's the importance of this chapter? What's the importance of these words? God did this. So for all the nation might know that the Lord's hands is powerful. 
He's God Almighty, God Eternal, and He demonstrated His power through the people of Israel. An amazing story. Uh, and that's why they had to build uh, this uh, uh, monument, memorial, for the next generation to remember how powerful it is. I hope that this can perhaps inspire you, inspire you uh, even right now where you are at. I know this is a study, but I don't know what you might be going through. I don't know what your challenge uh, might be. And oftentimes we allow our mind to drift uh, when we face difficulties. But when if we can go to scriptures like this and contemplate them, and this is not a scripture you just read and just go over it. And I'm going to do the same thing that it, it does. Verse 21. Then Joshua said to the Israelites, In the future, your children, your, your children will ask, What do these stones mean? And you can tell them. This is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For God dried up the river right before their eyes. And this is what God has been doing through, through man's history, that he's the one that moves. All what he's asking us to believe and obey and trust him, and he will do the work. That's what the people had to do. Joshua had to give the command. The people uh, had to listen, obey, put it into action. And then they would see uh, the glory of God being manifested. And today, it's the same thing. Because then this nation, the people, didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't have a clue how God was going to uh, bring them over across until when they experienced it. And they stood there. It doesn't say for how many hours, for how long, but they stood there. And they watch this powerful manifestation of God's hands in their life. How God brought them across um, over dry land. Watch your Jordan. Watch your challenge. And what can you learn from this story? And what can you apply in your own life? Think about it. If you are discouraged, if uh, the road ahead of you seems to be complicated, difficult to cross. I would like to encourage you to find read the scriptures, maybe maybe read the story again, and apply it to your own life. Apply it to your own circumstances and to realize that God hasn't changed. Jesus has given us the promise that he will be with us every single day. When he was here on the earth, he did perform wonders and miracles. Some people think they're over, but we don't think so. We believe that God still works wonders and miracles today. And we believe that God desires to show himself strong in your life, in your circumstances. I believe that God wants to um, come alongside you. Uh, better say, the Holy Spirit wants to come alongside you. And with your faith, that he will pardon whatsoever circumstances that you're facing, that you can cross over. In, in dry uh, ground and obtain the victory. Because we know Christ died for our sins. He already obtained the victory for us. But now we have to believe and follow through what, with what the Word of God says. So my friend that has been watching us, uh, obviously this portion is shorter than the one before. Uh, I, it's my prayer that um, you will be blessed and encouraged with Joshua chapter 4. And take the time to read it for yourself, pause, digest it, and realize that there is a reason why it's so repetitive. It's for you to uh, grasp the, the, the what's important in this whole chapter. And you can uh, apply these things into your own life, uh, which will help you grow in faith. So again, I would like to thank you for your time. And for being here with us, uh, may the Lord bless you and encourage you. And I thank you for those of you that are supporting us, for the great testimonies, that a good report that I'm hearing from you, that you're on um, uh, watching us. 
Uh, if you don't want to make any comments, you can click, you can put a smiley face. Also, uh, if you know anyone that might be in need of words of encouragement, please share uh, this these words with them. You can help me uh, continue to spread the message. Uh, you can become a preacher, an evangelist, by sharing this message with many other people that perhaps at this moment um, are in need and they're standing at the bank of the Jordan and they need to cross and then they don't know how to do it. But by um, you sharing with them, they'll be able to find a way and cross safely on dry ground. May the Lord bless you and keep you and thank you very much for uh, your support and for being with us tonight. So we'll see you until next time. Bye.